Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And thank you for joining me on another episode of the Roundtable Talk Show. I am your host, Sharifa Hardy, and I have an incredible show for you today. I have a couple of returning guests, some friends. I have some new guests, make some new friends. But this is definitely going to be an incredible show. So I'm going to ask you to do what I always ask you to do. And that is to go out and be an evangelist for the Roundtable Talk Show. There's someone in your network, there's someone in your house, there may be a coworker who wants to start on their entrepreneurial journey, and they won't be able to take this step unless you provide the information to them. So please go ahead and share the show. And while you're sharing the show, I just want to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by The Real Estate Playbook, a 100% educational workshop presented by real estate instructor Deborah Spence with a simple promise to help you develop a clear plan to sell more homes and earn a consistent income selling real estate. It's an in-person and virtual event. The link is in the Facebook post. So while you're going and signing up for the real estate playbook, I'm going to go ahead and introduce our first guest. And this young man, you have seen him here on the Roundtable Talk Show before. You've seen him on quite a few of the shows. Every time he's here, he's definitely opinionated, which I love. Mr. Robert B. Foster. Robert has over 20 years of business experience, which he is more than ready to impart to any audience hungry for knowledge and growth. His niche is in the service and fitness industry, running a gym, personal training, and sports coaching business effectively. After experiencing enormous success for himself, Robert Foster has turned his time and attention into helping struggling fitness professionals build a growing business. Good morning, Robert. How are you? I am well. I don't think you've ever introduced me first. I feel special. Well, I have a, I have a method to my madness. Mm-hmm. I introduce the returning people first, mainly out of respect, and also so the new people can see how it's done. And gotcha. usually I introduce Chandra, and then I say, and here's trouble. But today I was like, let me let me give Robert, you know, his, his respect. I was trying to be nice, Robert. How are you? Who are you? What do you do? What are you passionate about? I appreciate that. So I'm, a, I'm passionate about, about a lot of different things, but over the years, as I've as I've aged and matured, I find that helping other people is what really fuels me. And it's one of those things that I've always done. We can go back decades ago from being captain of sports teams and just helping my teammates to to realize their potential, you know, to work better as a unit towards a common goal. And then took those principles into business. And then now I'm taking those same principles into coaching and helping people sift through the obstacles in their lives, helping them take their life experiences and turn them into either stories or speeches, blogs, you know, the strength in their personal branding, all kinds of good stuff. But that's what I do. Well, I like that. It sounds interesting to me, Robert, but what are you passionate about? I know that's what you do. What is the thing that you would say you're passionate the most about? is watching the light switch pop on in people. So like, like I'm working with, with a young man now, he's down in Florida, you know, doesn't have the best confidence or self-esteem. And as we're working through his idea, just watching, just watching him light up the further we get into the process, like, and then just watching people realize, like, I can do this. People do want this and I can make this a a success. Just watching that process. That's what does it for me. Mm -hmm. What, What would you say is the formula to step into your greatness? Is to realize you have it, number one. Because mm-hmm. too many times it's so easy for us to think about all the things we don't have or the things we can't do or the obstacles that we have to overcome. If you just focus on the task at hand and who it serves and you step into that passion, you naturally step into your greatness. Mm, I like that. But do you feel that it needs someone to be like an accountability partner? Because so often we, we feel and we say that we want greatness. We want to change our lives. We want to be better people. But then... At the end of the day, we go back to being exactly who we are. That comes from a lack of clarity. So mm-hmm. it's like have, having a mentor definitely helps because I had one year, years ago. 
And, you know, he helped me find that clarity. And then once you have it, it's easy to run with it. Most people revert back to what they've always done because that's what's familiar. And what they, what they want to do is more of an idea, you know, so like it's not a clear vision. So once you get that clear vision, it's very easy to step into it. Okay, well, let's talk about that some more, Robert, but I want to go ahead and introduce my next guest. And this lovely young lady you will definitely love because I love her immensely. She is my PR representative. I just was in Pretty Girls Hustle magazine, thanks to her. So many opportunities, doors that have opened up, thanks to her. So before I even read her information and her bio, I wanted to let you know this young lady is amazing, Miss. Chandra Gore. Integrity and hard work have always been the hallmarks Chandra has used to build successful and profitable businesses. Through her consulting firm, she has worked with entrepreneurs to help them create foundations for success through her boutique consulting and public relations firm, Chandra Gore Consulting. Quietly making strides with placements for small businesses, entertainment, and Sharifa Hardy. Good morning, Chandra. How are you? (laughs) Good morning. It is a pleasure to be here. You know, I've already booked for the rest of the year. So you already know you're going to see my face once a month on the show because I want to provide, you know, commentary and some tips. And I love what Robert said when he was saying that when the light goes off, that's my favorite part of working with people and getting their businesses and their brands together because once that light bulb, you see the passion and the spark comes back and it's the greatest feeling ever because sometimes that's all they need is a little bit of a push and some rearranging and then they're ready to go. So I, I love that's the biggest part of my business is the aha moment so yes i must one thing we can agree on today robert is that (laughs) (laughs) we love to see that spark in someone's eye or that you know you can tell when their heart is at ease because i mean being being an entrepreneur is not easy but being able to help someone define their foundation and get started and get re-energized and help them to fall in love again with why they started again is such an amazing feeling. And then to get press around it for me, it's awesome because I get to see other people get to see the joy that they have in their business. So, mm-hmm. yeah. mm-hmm. yes, but you definitely are an expert at getting media attention. What what may, what interests you in PR and media and g- telling the stories? You know, it's it's because it's the the writing part for me. Mm-hmm. Because if I see so like. When I'm writing a pitch, normally I look at the person and I'm like, I want people to see how great they are. So that's where it comes from, you know, because it's like, it's that that extra boost, that extra, you know, um, it gives me energy just to write about someone and, you know, share their story and share exactly how they're feeling and why they do what they do so they can connect with a bigger audience. And once people know the story behind the brand, people are so much more likely to build that trust in that brand and recognize that brand and want to see more of that brand. So that's the, uh, it makes me so happy. I know you're just smiling from ear to ear. I love it. But too often as entrepreneurs and small business owners, we are we may be very clear on what we do. Right. But we may not know what our story is. How do you help them find their story in the sea of stories? Well, the first thing I ask is, how do you want to be perceived? What do you want? What do you want your um what do you want your reflection to look like? Because sometimes they don't know what they want to appear like to the audience because some people are like, oh, I want to be a boss. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, being a boss is so many, you know, how do you want to be interpreted? Do you want to be the the mean boss? Do you like, what do you want to be? Like who, who, what side do you want to show? So a lot of times I end up getting, talking to them and reiterating like, going over like so what do you want to be what do you want what do you want people to see you as and then it finally clicks and they're able to describe like listen i want them to be but i want them to respect my brand i want them to come to me as a subject matter expert you know i want these those wants and then we take it from there and we we curate a story that will tell that because not everyone is able to sit and say you know because we have all these cliches 
things floating around, you know, I'm this, I'm that, but your story doesn't match. So lining up the brand, the, 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 the message, everything, it go, it has to, it has to be one cohesive thing. So I like helping getting people, getting people to that point. Yes. And you do it well. Now, Chandra, I am going to come back to you. I want to go ahead and introduce our next guest, the amazing Miss Pamela Nye. As CEO and owner of Neuroscience Nursing, she strives to elevate the knowledge of nurses in the area of brain disorders, diseases, and injury, and to provide hospital leadership with consultation and guidance to obtain and maintain stroke certifications at all levels. Considered an expert in her nursing field, she's also a legal consultant for attorneys and hospitals. She also volunteers in her community. Good morning, Pamela. How are you? Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. Um, you are so welcome. Well, let, let me tell you first who I am. Uh, I'm a nurse. First and foremost, down to my core, I'm a nurse. I remember, um, you know, talk, you know, uh, thinking about what I wanted to be when I was fully cooked and, and fully blossomed. And to hear Robert say, that his aha moment is when he sees the spark light up in their eyes, when they get it, kind of. And I remember when I got it. Um, I became a nurse when I um, was around them. I had really no idea what nurses did. And most of the American public today have no idea what a nurse does or what they are until a year ago, right? A year ago when this pandemic started, all of a sudden, Everybody had a really good idea what nurses were and what they did, and they had an appreciation for them like none that they've ever had. So I'm here to say thank you. I'm here to say thank you to the 5 million nurses that every day put their shoes on, tie them up, and walk into the mess. Walk into that cesspool we know as COVID-19. So I'm... I'm passionate about the work that they do and they do it every day without very much fanfare. So that's, that's why I'm here is to help you and all of your listeners understand the value of nurses. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. How would you, how do you say you help them understand? Cause I agree with you. I believe, especially like you said, we really, we only, nurses are one of those people that we only really think about when we need them. I mean, there are certain industries, we don't, we don't pay them any attention. They're just there. But then all of a sudden when your world goes crazy, you're like, oh my God, I love you. Thank you. You saved my life. You helped me. And especially when you find a nurse who has an excellent bedside manner, because I always tell people I can never be a nurse ever because my bedside manner is... <laughs> Like I'm bad enough on a talk show. So you don't want me at your bedside. I'm like, get, get healthy already. Fix it. Get out this bed, you know? So I really appreciate it. So what are some of the ways that you've seen people appreciate nurses? Well, <clears throat> you know, um, you're, you're exactly right. You don't think much about nurses until you need one. Mm -hmm. And then um, my best example of that is as a very young nurse, I took care of a man who fell from a scaffolding oh, wow. and as he fell, he fell onto his outstretched arms to try to break his fall. And in doing that, he broke both arms. Okay. And so uh, when he was, when the doctors were finished uh, doing the treatments and whatnot and putting the casts on and whatnot, um, he could only stretch his arms out like this. He couldn't bend them at the elbow. So have you ever thought about, what your life would be like if you couldn't bend your elbows. No. You couldn't scratch your nose and you couldn't do a lot of other things that are pretty personal and intimate that, you know, you, you couldn't take care of yourself. And I remember how embarrassed he was to have a nurse. And usually these nurses are young, you know, attractive young women who are between 20 and 30 years old when they first start, take care of his toileting needs and put it, you know, take, take a step back and think about yourself. How would you feel if you had some young person who was taking care of that for you? 
you never really think about, oh my God, what if I couldn't? And that's, that's when people really get a strong appreciation. You know, when you stop to think about it, nurses are in your life from the first time you get that slap on your backside in the delivery room, right up until they're holding your hand when you're taking your last breath. And as, as you said, you really appreciate one when you get one who is truly a nurse right down to their fibers, who um, can look in your eyes and feel that, that, nur that nurturing and that caring that they bring to everyday life. And um, I doubt that there's very many of us here that have not been in the presence of a nurse at some point in their lives. And, you know, in over the past few uh, months, I've been getting the vaccine. We were talking about this before the show started. Um, and I really have seen how appreciative people are of nurses. You know, they, they give us bouquets of flowers and we love that and a box of candy. We love that too, <laughs> but I'm here to do a little more. I want to start a worldwide initiative to thank nurses. And if you want to be one, oh, it's going to be wonderful. And, uh, and it's only just starting. And, and it's people like you that are going to get the word out there so that other people know that this even exists. If you want to take a look, go on to www.thankanurseteamchallenge.org. And you'll be able to leave a message for a nurse. That's wonderful. I love the idea. Now, Pamela, I am going to come back to you. I want to go ahead and introduce our next guest, Mr. Papa Joe. Hollywood's Papa Joe is a successful entrepreneur, recording artist, and a two-time Amazon bestselling author who lost 250 pounds by shutting himself in his apartment and dieting on a $21 per day budget. He did this by living a quarantine life and remaining healthy and active on a small budget. Good morning, Papa Joe. How are morning. you? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. How you doing? I'm excited. I want to learn about this <laughs> quarantine diet because I know Robert's over here. Robert's like, I know. <laughs> 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 It's going to be good today. <laughs> and then, wait a minute, then Pamela, she's a nurse. She also I know. Make sure is healthy. So we got to hear what's going on with We you got guys. everybody in the house. We got everybody in the house. And we got PR behind that, too. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> what happened? The world uh, went, into went into quarantine. You went into your apartment, and the correct. rest is history. Very much so. Um, basically what happened was I saw myself in my first uh, dance music video called Last Night a DJ Saved My Life. Oh, by the way, hi everybody. Uh, my name is Papa Joe Aviance. Let me introduce myself real quick. I'm a recording artist, uh, life coach, and uh, two-time best-selling author of my book called, where is that? Balancing the Scales, right there. Mm -hmm. So what is yeah. balancing the scales? What scales are we balancing? Our, our own. <laughs> Our own. Um, basically, it's the mind, body, and the, and your business. You know, it's keeping everything in perspective, and that's what it was all about. But how it all got started was uh, I saw myself in my first music video that became a top ten Billboard dance hit called "Last Night a DJ Saved My Life." I like that song. That's what I was, was I was like jamming. Okay. Last night a DJ saved my life. Uh, <laughs> I no, I did, I did the club. I did the club. I did the club version. Okay. But I did the club version, but still the same. The same. Same rap that I did in the original, um, but uh, that wound up becoming number six on the Billboard dance hits. And I said, you know what? I'm tired of looking how I used to look. And so I basically asked myself, what's the easiest exercise that I can do when it was walking? So basically uh, walking up to five miles a day for the 18 months, I was able to walk off the 250 pounds. And by shopping for healthy foods at a dollar store. Wow, I love I it. For, I shop for foods at the 99 cent only store, proving that you don't have to be wealthy to eat healthy. Wow, and that's what you talk about in your book? Yep, that's what I talk about in the book, Balancing the Scales. But also here, let me show you this real quick. I just want to, anybody out there that's struggling with their weight, I went from a size 56 to 36. Okay, stand up real quick. I just want to see. Oh, wow. Like two people. That was two people, two of you. <laughs> That's one side. 
And that's the other. <laughs> wow. That's one Congratulations. Time. That's the other. <laughs> Congratulations. How did you stick to it? Because one of the things that, that was interesting for me is when I launched this show, I got I was like, I gotta get ready. I gotta lose the weight. I gotta, you know, do all these different things. I launched the show 30th of March, 2020. COVID hit, my emotions went crazy, and I was at McDonald's ordering mocha cafe. I was like, I needed something to make me feel better. So how did you stick to it? You know what? I kept asking myself three W's, what, when, why? When every time I went to go to the grocery store, I went to get food, I would just, first of all, well, number one, when you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, you do what you gotta do to get over that feeling. Just like Robert has said, it's finding, it's finding that wake up call, finding that clarity and just being like, boom, finding that spark. And that's for me, that's what it was. It was the three W's. I had to figure out my triggers as to why I was eating certain things. So for me, it's always what, when, why. Like, what are you eating? All right, I want a bag of Doritos. All right, why you want it? You know, and then figuring out what it is, when you want it, and why. And then once I was able to figure that out, the discipline was kind of sticking in and I was able just to, to continue on a daily basis. But to be honest with you, it's always figuring out the why. Mm-hmm. You know, so when you're getting ready to order that mocha, okay, why do I want it? Cause I don't feel good. I, I need a hug. I need some. Well, see, that's where we gotta find that spark. We gotta find that spark, you know. So you get you get back and you just and it just becomes like a natural thing. I mean, to be honest with you, look at this, guys. This is what I used to look like. Wow. That I, I, that's interesting. I think I've seen that picture. You in a red shirt. That must okay. be your, one of your more favorite. And how's this? <laughs> yeah. But it really is just finding that finding the. For me, it was just, for me, I was just tired of being heavy. I've been heavy all of my life. That's all I know. Uh, literally went from, from zero to husky in, in, in a, a, a day. You know, I went from small, medium, large, extra large, husky. And so I've been at that size for a very long time. So this is the very first time that I'm in this new body. And actually, I'm 265 pounds down now. Oh, wow. wow. Congratulations. Thank you. Robert. But, it really, but, it, but, it, but it really is. It's, it's finding, I want to be able to help people to, like Robert says, avoid those pitfalls and those obstacles in life that just get you down and, and, and bring you back to square one. We're better than that. And it's just finding that spark and igniting it, you know, and that's why I call myself the electric Negro. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta light that spark, light that spark. It's Robert, what, what are your thoughts? Should we, but, but before, before I answer that, can, can I share something quickly based on what Pamela was talking about? Absolutely. So my sister, and I got I got to be strong here because I don't want Chandra seeing my emotional side. So uh, <laughs> my Dang, sister, let you forget it. <laughs> my sister had a brain aneurysm burst back oh. in 2016, and you know there's like a 20 percent chance of survival with, with for the type that she had, and so there was an off duty EMT behind her. So when uh, she was driving and her, when it happened her car just veered off the road and she slammed into a tree. And so, so uh, now let me fast forward. So now she's in the ER, you know, my parents are are, are up there. You know, I I left, left my gym and I went, I'm in, I'm in Rhode Island. So this was up in Worcester, Mass. So it was about an, about an hour away. And so we get there and we all, we all just knew that she had a car accident. So we didn't even know about the aneurysm at this point. So the doctor comes down and it, it explains to us because uh, she had a laceration on her forehead. They gave her the CAT scan and that's when they noticed the bleeding on the other side. You know, so they rushed her in, into surgery and then we got to see her for the first time and she was almost unrecognizable. Like she was just completely swollen. They had to remove a piece of her, piece of her scalp and like it was pretty, pretty tough to see. And so... Now, my family, we're all pretty extroverted, you know, so like even though my sister's laying there clinging to life, you know, we always believe during tragedy, we got to be positive. We got to be positive. And so we're like playing her favorite songs like she loves Smokey Robinson. She loves Mary J. Blige. And so, you know, we're playing music. We're, you know, telling her stories. And so one of the nurses had come in and she says, you know, you guys are such a joy to be here. And we're like, to, for us, we're like, this is just how we are. But she's like, we get yelled at, we get swore at, people treat us awfully, awfully, you know, because granted, people are there grieving when you're in the trauma ward, like you're not there for a good reason. 
But it's like, but we also understand you know, what they go through on a day to day. And there was one point where my, my brother-in-law, he, he was just having having a weak moment. Because again, at this point, we still didn't know if she was going to pull through or not. And so they had just lost someone. You know, someone had lost their life there. And the nurses were cleaning out, out the room and, you know, they were swapping stories and they were they were laughing a little. And my brother-in-law took offense to it. He's like, oh, they're in there laughing and having fun while she's laying there in a coma. And I was like, Elle, I said, you got to remember, this is the trauma ward. They deal with awful stuff all day long. Yeah. I was like, if they have a moment to laugh, let them laugh. You know, so I think what Pamela was saying about how how underappreciated nurses are because we're just focused on the loved one. You know, mm -hmm. we're not really focused on what the people helping our loved ones are going through. So yes. thank you for what, for, for what you do. I wrote down that web, that website, and I will definitely hope help you promote that. Thank a nurse team challenge. Thank yes. you so much, Robert. Um, you summed it up so well. Um, what we do every day. Uh, we oftentimes, forget that families are in the middle of trauma and crisis. And you're right. We do on occasion laugh and have fun at work. And we, you know, I, I think if we didn't do that, we would spend our whole day crying yeah. um, because people's people and people and their families are hurting, are hurting every day. And so if we can bring, and I used to say, it's, it's so strange that, um, that you bring up your, your sister's aneurysm because believe it or not, I was the stroke coordinator at UCLA, Santa Monica. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. So your sister would have been my patient. Yep. Um, and I can't tell you how traumatizing and how scary it is for a family to witness what your family went through. And I'm so sorry. And I, and I hope, and she's in my prayers because all of my patients are in my prayers every night. Please, God, save my neuro patients. Um, and I'm, I'm hoping she's recovering because the recovery can be very long and very yeah. arduous. Is that the case for her? Yes. Yes. She just ce celebrated her 50th birthday last Wednesday. You know, like she's she can walk. She has to walk with a cane and she still has some paralysis in her left arm. But she's she's still with us. You know, she's still with us. I'm trying to get her to open up and share her story because like she works in the special education department. So she works with a lot of schools, a lot of colleges, and she was a college basketball player and coach. And I told her, I was like, right now, you are the epitome of seize the moment, you know, because you never know when your life can change. I, I was like, you know, you want to get out there. But she's just so mad that she's not who she was five years ago. You know, so I'm trying to trying to help her break through that. It's like, yeah, you're in a situation, but you can use this situation to inspire other people instead of taking, I don't want to say pity party, because I know what she's going through is traumatic for, for her and, and her family, her immediate family. But she can there there's a message of hope there that I'm trying trying to get get her to step into. Yeah, but sometimes people, you know, people have to do everything on their time yeah, when they're right. ready. Like Papa Joe was talking about, he was heavy all of his life, you know, and he's an adult man. And finally he says, you know what? I'm tired of being tired. So when people feel whatever inspiration or motivation it is, they'll step out to them, step, step out into it. So yeah, I yeah. applaud. Congratulations. I'm just glad to, to see that she made it through. That's such yes. a, a blessing. Mm -hmm. Now. Pamela, you mentioned on this website that people can thank a nurse. Uh, can they do anything more than thank a nurse? Can they give? One of the things that I've been seeing is, like you said, people sending gifts to the hospitals, people mm -hmm. sending, you know, can they, can they, you know, I think that's wonderful that they can send you, send a thank you note, but through the website, can they send, you know, contributions, gifts, flowers, like you mentioned? You know, they actually can. Uh, the focus is not on money. And I know that that people who are entrepreneurial are saying, what? You know, you're not interested in money. I am more interested in the appreciation messages. And so we're calling this thing the wall. It's the nursing wall of gratitude. Um, do we take money? Do we take donations? Of course we do. I never refuse money. And the money that is donated goes into our scholarship fund. So 
Right now, I have three scholarships that were awarded, um, one from UCLA, one from the National Association of Clinical Nurse Specialists, and one from the Association of California Nurse Leaders. And I've got about five more that are going to be awarded throughout the rest of this year. But heavens, yes, we would love a donation, but that's not the focus. The focus is to allow you and everyone at no cost whatsoever just to say thank you. And that can be done through the wall, or excuse me, through the website. And right now the website isn't live. But if you go on and take a look, and please do, uh, there will be a place where you can put your name and email address, and it will send you a message that will say, on May 6th, this wall goes live. Please don't forget to put it on your calendar and write a message on the wall. It's kind of like um, when you think about a wall and you think about writing a message, you can think about graffiti. You know, there are people that write their messages on walls, right? And you can think about the Vietnam Memorial. There are messages on walls, mostly names. But I want this wall to be there forever for nurses. And if she, he or she is having a bad day, they can log on, read a message from um, Papa Joe, uh, who says, you know, when I was doing my dieting, you know, well, there was a nurse there that talked to me about diet and food choices or whatever, you know, or I, and what I know is that each of you have been in the presence of a nurse at one time or another. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you wanted to make a point, Papa Joe? Oh, no, I totally agree with everything she's saying. Um, you know, um, uh, um, nurses have helped me through them. I actually um, I got into a car accident, a uh, bicycle accident, uh, two years ago. And no <laughs> worries. Um, and I was supposed to go on the Rachel Ray show the next day and share my story for the first time. And I got hit by a car the day before. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I was in the hospital with a broken leg and I thought I was never going to walk again. And, and, you know, the one thing that 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 saved my life was walking was the one thing that brought me down, hit by a car. And then I, I got hit you know, my legs. But the nurse helped me through that time period and guided me through and just just gave me the confidence that I needed just to get back up and start walking again. And then I had and literally what happened was um uh, one of the nurses actually wanted, she was actually an in-home nurse as well. Uh, so she was in, 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 I'm sorry, she was moonlighting as an out, out I'm sorry, Pamela, what would they be called? The, the outside, the in-home care nurses? Home, home care nurses. Home care nurses, yes. So she moonlighted as a home care nurse. So she actually, I, she told me about the company she was working for. She was able to moonlight with me at night. So she kind of helped me guide me through and help me with my physical therapy and everything. But if it hadn't been for her, I wouldn't be back to where I'm at right now. So I, I applaud you for what you're doing. And I think it's great. And I'll be one of the first or second or third, one of many to sign up. <laughs> I think you're already signing up. Signing up right now. I want to go over to Chandra. I see, I see your ears just lighting up. We have so many. I mean, look at all the stories. We have Papa Joe lost over 250 pounds. That's an incredible story. Now, Pamela is launching this website to thank nurses. That's rare. That's an incredible story. Robert is always amazing, but his sister has a story. So we just going to hold on to his sister's ready to tell the story. But Chandra, I'm pretty sure you have some thoughts. Because <laughs> I'm in awe of, you know, because, because of how the pandemic has played a part in a lot of people's um, mental health and you know we rarely we, we always see the quarantine 15 and you gain so much weight and here you are Papa Joe you decided to use that time and but to also come with a budget for your food because I'm everyone says eating eating right is expensive I don't think so I mean if you go to the farmer's market and you plan your meals and stuff like that you could do that but for you to have written a book so that people can be inspired and also follow your tips to learn how to do the same thing. That is amazing. And I mean, I like now I want to know more because not saying that. No, I don't go to the gym. I don't do none of that. I, <laughs> Neither do I. Neither do I. That's why I said, well, I tell myself, I was 450 pounds. I literally said to myself, what is the easiest exercise that I can do? Because exercise to me back then felt like a chore. It felt like work. 
it felt like something I'm like, oh, you got to brush your teeth. Ah, you got to work out. Ah. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. I, so, I'm, not, I'm not, I'm not, I don't, I know people named Jim. I never go to the gym. Thank you. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So, I, again, so again, so for me, I didn't want to be judged or feel judged in the gym. So mm -hmm. I said, you know what? If I walk on the sidewalk, if somebody is going to judge me, passing in the car, that's only a three second glance, shoom, and gone, and keep on walking. Right. You know yeah. what I'm so I didn't have to worry about being judged. I'd be in my own little bubble, put my headphones on, get my dance music. And then it was funny because I did dance music, and I'm like, I danced in the club, but I never used it for exercise. Yes. <laughs> so, so, so probably two together. Yes, and then Papa finally Joe, it clicked, and that's when the aha went ding. <laughs> <laughs> Papa Joe, I want to. That was an excellent point. Thank you, Chandra, because I missed that completely. Let's go back to this twenty-one day, uh, twenty-one dollars a day budget. Yeah. What were you eating for twenty-one dollars a day? Um, spinach omelet, cottage cheese, yogurts, uh, nuts, fruits and vegetables, and high-protein meats, beef, chicken, or fish. Mm, and I, would keep, I went from eating seven thousand calories a day to twenty-five hundred. Wait. Okay. Let's let's everybody. My late night bins. My late night bin sessions used to consist of a two Big Mac meal, large size, a family size bag of Doritos. This is after I've eaten breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The late night bin sessions, two Big Mac meal, um, large size, a uh, family size bag of a family size bag of Doritos. Sometimes a whole chocolate cake or just maybe a slice, depending on that. And then I always wash it down with two Diet Cokes. I was trying to be cute, thinking I was trying to save some calories. Like, ooh, I ate, me and why don't I <laughs> ate everything in the house, ate everything in the refrigerator. <laughs> I'm just, like, but what was a Diet Coke? Never mind. We know that it made no difference, but it made you feel good. I can't. Yeah, for, the, for the moment, you know, because I was feeling bad, I was literally killing myself with food slowly. And as I say before, I was two cheeseburgers away from a heart attack. Mm. I, I gotta, I gotta, I, you know what? And I know, Miss um, Nye, you are a nurse. You sitting up, I know you're like, oh my, I mean, his arteries gotta be working overtime. I know that, but I'm just in awe of the, you know, the transparency and the honesty. See, this is what I tell people all the time. If you're authentic in your story, when you tell your story, it will resonate and touch people. And that's the authenticity that I hear in your voice. And then I hear it in your voice too, um, um, Pamela. It's like, it's one of those things. And then, you know, Robert of all people is up here, you know, shedding thug tears and things. So. <laughs> I'm just, it's like the authenticity of your stories makes it makes it relatable and i think more people need to do that and like i am saying sharifa sharifa does that too it's like people know her like you you know your story you're authentic your truth you you expose your your failures and your wins so and you're authentic in that so i love the fact that everyone here is auth being authentic and it makes you it draws you in so this is exactly where people need to understand you can't fake it till you make it that needs to not be in anybody's vocabulary, anybody's repertoire of things they need to do. That's just throw that out the window. Be authentic because between, you know, every single story resonated, every single story landed. So to me, that just shows like I'm still in awe of the, the wall for nurses because I know a couple nurses and some nurses who passed away because of COVID, because they were working there on the front lines. And the people who actually, besides nurses, the ones who are cleaning the beds and cleaning the rooms and stuff, they've took a hit too. So it's like anybody who cares for anyone in that kind of a state, we need to really honor them and understand like without them, there would be nothing right now. Doctors can't doctor without nurses. You are so correct. And, you know, we, we love our, uh, we call them EVS, environmental mm -hmm. services. We love our environmental people because we couldn't do it without them. I mean, if they weren't there to scrub the room clean and to make it safe for everyone coming in and out, we couldn't do what we do. So we're very, very dependent on them. And we love them. Absolutely. And well, if you don't mind me asking, how did the idea come about? I mean, I've noticed it's been through your career, but like, what was that wake up call for you? Um, let me understand what your question is again. Um, well, you, you started, you're starting, you're starting this, 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 this movement. And I will try, I'm, I'm curious as to what was your wake up call? Like, what, what was it that, what was that determining factor for you that just said, I'm going to do this and jump into this. And this is what I'm going to, this is my calling. 
Got it. Um, I started the idea in 2018 um, because I knew that 2020 was the year of the nurse. Did you know that? That 2020? No, I did not. No, no one did. And you know why? Why? Because of the political strife, we had tensions, you know, among our all of our ethnicities, and we had a pandemic. And the year of the nurse was not the top story on the news. It just should have been. It well, it was yes, I agree. It got swept under the carpet. And nurses who should have been honored and they should have been, we should have had a news story every night about the wonders of a nurse and in particular or a group of nurses. It didn't happen. So what did we do? We honored ourselves. Okay, now what kind of what kind of excitement is that? Oh, I'm so good, you know. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh so you know. And I, I stood back and I thought, wow, the year of the nurse, the 200th birthday of Florence Nightingale, which would have been uh, May of 2020, no one knew. I am not um, going to stand back and let that happen. I can't. I just can't let those nurses who have worked harder than they ever have in their lives not get some form of recognition. And that's how it all began, really. I well, think they've that's got a good champ. They've got a good leader and a champion in front of them. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you. Um, you know, I've I remember um, a couple times in my life and hearing uh, Robert talk about his sister. I remember a pivotal moment in my life when I was a very young nurse. I'd only been a year out of school, and this is you got to remember this is a long time ago um, when nurses didn't sit on the edge of a patient's bed ever, and we didn't have our hair down. We always had our hair back just wasn't done. And if you held up your fingernails and you could see your fingernails over the tips of your fingers, then they needed to be cut. Oh, wow. If I could see, if I could see your knees in your, in your uniforms dress, then your dress was too short. So this, you know, we were like, we were like nuns back in the day. So I remember going to the bedside of this young man who was 25 years old. It was a motorcycle accident and he was laying in the bed motionless in a coma and the night nurse was leaving and we, you know sort of like military there's a handoff procedure where the night nurse talks to the day nurse and says this is what happened through the night this is what you need to do through the day and there's a handoff every shift and it's called report okay so we're reporting off and she said to me you know it's very sad this this young man um, probably will never be um, a living breathing thinking human being again if he survives this at all We expect that he will probably die. So your job is to support the family and make sure they're okay. And I thought, gosh, you know, here I am, 23, 24 years old. What did I know from anything? I knew that I had a young man laying in a bed next to me that was likely to die on my shift. And so I sat down, took my blood pressure cuff and wrapped it around his arm. And I just sort of absentmindedly said, good morning, And you know what happened? He said, good morning. I thought, my God, I had awakened the dead. (laughs) It was a miracle moment for me. And I thought, gosh, you know, I couldn't believe what I had seen. And Robert, I've got a funny feeling that you've lived this moment um, with your sister. I really do. And the next day, this young man woke up. His eyes were open. He was talking. And then one of the night nurses who reported off to, to me about a week and a half later said, you'll ne- I can't remember this guy's name, so I'm just going to call him John. You'll never guess what John did. He walked down the hall and called his mom on the cell phone or on the, on the pay phone. And it was like I, we never dreamed we would see this in this young man ever. And, I, of course, I've lost track of him. I don't know. But I've got a funny feeling he recovered. I've got a funny feeling he, like your sister, Robert, is probably finally walking a path of the new normal. And I hope your sister gets to a point where she can measure her gains by how she was six months ago. And then in six months, she should measure her gains as to how she she is today, because it's only that way that she will see how much she has improved and how much she's done. Yes, yeah, she's um, because- definitely starting to. Good. That's good news. Yes. Mm-hmm. 
So, uh, Robert, when you when you hear Pamela talking and about her journey, did you have that moment when when your sister? I mean, how did you get the news? How did you learn that she had recovered? Well, well, we we knew she was going to recover. Um, she was in a coma, a medically induced coma for six weeks. So uh, this was day, I don't know, seven or eight, somewhere around there. It was myself and it was either my mother or my other sister. We, we were in there with her and we were all talking. And so the nurse comes in and I was like, excuse me. I was like, can she hear us? And she's like, I don't know. Let me ask. And so she got close into her ear. She's like, Ramona, she's like, Ramona, if you can hear us, give us a thumbs up. And then there was silence for a second. Then you could see her hand start to shake and it slowly went. And then the thumb popped up. And then it was at that moment where like, she's coming back. You know, wow. like she's definitely coming back. And that's when we started playing the music. And and I got to tell you, I know we're in a racially sensitive time in the world right now, but we were that stereotypical black family. <laughs> my, my mom, my mom came up with a cooler, right? She had Long Island iced tea in the cooler. She had, she had potato salad, she had chicken wings, and we just surrounded her with so much positivity. So it's like we didn't let any negativity come in. It was to the point to where the, the nurses would come in and be like, guys, we absolutely love this. She's like, but there's other families really grieving <laughs> right now. And so, you know, so like we had to tone it down some, but it was that moment and the moment when she first opened up her eyes. Mm -hmm. so, and I was the first one she saw. So oh! <laughs> it was like, we saw her eyelids moving and I got right in front of her face. <laughs> I was like, like, I'm driving up here every damn day. She's going to see me. <laughs> you know, that so is she, so powerful. Yeah, and so like she had all kinds of tubes and stuff in her. So once she was able to, to move, to, well, she could move her right hand. We got her a dry erase board because she couldn't talk. So we got her a dry erase board so we could, you know, she could write to us and stuff. And yeah, but like I said, once she did that thumbs up, like right there, we were all like, she she's coming back. Like she got that force of spirit, man. We are stubborn as hell when it comes to those stuff. That, that wow. stuff. I just saw that as a movie. Like that was that moment in the movie. <laughs> just laying there, your hand is shaking. Like, that's, I, I, I gotta. We gotta talk to your sister, Robert. It's, we in it together, yes. all five of us. Yeah. We gotta Absolutely. Got to um, get the book. I don't want to. I don't want to steal too much time, but I do want to double down on something that Chandra said about being your authentic self, because mm -hmm. I actually got inspired by you in this show. Because when I first started my podcast, I didn't know what the hell I was doing, you know. So I just studied what other people were doing, and I kind of mimicked that. And, you know, that's how most things start anyway. You know, you find someone doing what you're doing, and you mimic it. But, you know, people would send me the talking points, and people always want to talk about all the good stuff. And, mm -hmm. I, and, and like, I don't want to talk about any of that. Like, I want to talk, how did you get there? What were you feeling when you decided this? Like, I wanted to get deep into the heart of it. And so when I came on to, to your show... And, you know, again, my first thought was like, well, what, what's the topic? And like, there is no topic. I'm like, okay, there's five of us here <laughs> and there's no topic. <laughs> so it's like, how is this going to go? And then the show flowed beautifully, you know, and then I was on the 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 face to face one that was where I met Chandra. See, and now now we don't have any beef. We just met on a debate show. <laughs> and we were on opposite sides of the debate. <laughs> so I have no ill will towards her. You know, but, you know, but just but, but once I switched it, I was like, you know, I was like, let, let me try that. I said, let me try this my own way, because I want people to share their authentic journey. You know, not the not the watered down, made up stuff that you want people not really made up, but, you know, just all the good stuff. I want to hear the I want to hear when you were at your worst. Yeah, and then, and then what you did to pull yourself out of it, like that's the stuff that people are going to connect with. Well, thank you for Robert. Robert, thank you for sharing that story. You just made my day today. That means a lot because I watched your show and I know you saw this, but I actually scheduled your show and then I canceled your show. I did see that, but, and I was like, Robert's going to see this and be like, "What happened?" But when I went to your website, it said it was at eleven o'clock. 
And uh, remember, I'm on uh, right. West Coast. So then when I when it converted the time and it was at 8 a.m., I was like, oh, I can't do it. That's the roundtable talk show. So I was like, we'll figure it out. I'll mm. Chandra will host the show for me one day. I don't know. And then I'll grab a seat no, on we your can, show. We can do a different time. Yeah, we can okay. do a different time. That that yeah, because like I have people from Australia and India, yeah. and you know, they're like hours upon hours ahead of us. So like I switch it up, you know, so so I can accommodate people. So well, if, if I have to shift it an hour or two, yeah, I'll definitely get get you in there. Please do that for me because I, oh, I want to come and sit down. With you. Say that I'm again. Sorry, Chandra. He's looking for his show. I I already have one. Like I'll 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 feature all of you. That's <laughs> wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Because because I'm sending you all links because I want to to feature you all on my um uh, my blog. By the way, well, actually, I want to make one one quick point. Of, if I can get in touch with everybody as well, I'd like to send you guys a copy of the book. Yes, oh, awesome. I love so that for everybody. Yes. Every, all okay. the Amazon. Huh? Is it available on Amazon? It is available on Amazon, but, but I want to send. I want to send, you, I want to send you guys a copy. Okay. Okay. So let's please get in touch with each other somehow, some way, shape, or form. And uh, yeah, I want to get your addresses and I can send you guys a copy. Yes, did you hear, Papa Joe, did you hear what Chandra said? I didn't hear the last part. We could do a, a Amazon live, a live stream to talk let's, about your book. Let's do that. Okay. Okay. Everybody, <laughs> everybody's making friends. I took over the control of my show. Let me tell you <laughs> I want to talk about, right? You know what I mean? You're not there yet. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't forget where y'all met. That's what I'm saying. Don't forget, don't forget this is macho. This is my, you know what I mean? But Robert, the reason that I, I just wanted to say this is that I love doing it this way with no topic is because I've been doing one-on-one -on -one interviews since 2009. Wow. And one of the common themes that I saw is that, especially when people, um, when I just come up with my own questions, people would talk and they would do the interview. But after the interview, they would say, well, you know, I really wanted to talk about this. I, you know, I really wanted to mention this, but I didn't get a chance because you didn't ask me about it. And so mm. now I'm like, let's just have a conversation because yes. people will talk about what is important to them, you know, and it, it's a platform, an opportunity. So whatever we want to talk about, and it's been amazing the directions that the, the conversation go, but it usually winds up here to where we're all like oh i met a new friend this is what i could do with you and i can do that with pamela and then i'm gonna be a guest on robert's show and then i'm gonna take weight loss tips from papa joe and then i'm you know so it's it's i love it i just love it and i'm just grateful and humbled that i have the opportunity to do what i love now we are coming down to the last few minutes of the show and what i love to do at the end of every show is just simply allow my guests the opportunity to speak directly to the audience, to everyone who was watching this show live, as well as everyone who was watching it in the archives and let them know what you want them to take away from your appearance here today. Papa Joe, we're going to start with you. Okay. <laughs> takeaway, biggest takeaway today is be your authentic self and thrive to be your best self. And remember, it's not about the weight that you lose. It's about the life that you gain. So check out Balancing the Scales. And also, if you want to, I have a new Black superhero called the Electric Negro coming out very shortly. But I also want people to thrive to be the best selves. And that's all that I can ask for. Be electric, stay healthy, stay active, and be safe. Wow, that was an excellent commercial. I love that you're a professional. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Pamela, what do you have for us? Well, everybody should remember that May 6th through May 12th, this year, 2021, is the year of the nurse plus one. And the, the, um, the wall will be open for you to write your message to nurses, your message of appreciation, or any message whatsoever. Um, if you have a friend that's a nurse, if you have been nursed um, by, by a nurse on May 6th. So again, www.thankanurseteamchallenge.org. You can write your message. And on May 12th, we're having a, a local event for doctors and nurses, primarily nurses, but we're inviting some of our doctor friends to come with us to celebrate Nurses Week. We're going to unveil the wall and show everyone how many, um, how many people have written on the wall and what the messages were. This wall is for nurses to, when they've had a particularly bad day and, you know, Robert, Nursing your sister 
was difficult for those nurses because they invest their feelings and their emotions into those patients. They aren't just superficially taking care of them. It, when they have good days, the nurse is, has a good day. When your sister had a bad day, that nurse had a bad day too. So write your message on the wall and feel free to contact me anytime. My, my um, email address is Pamela Jane Nye at neurosciencenursing.org. And thank you so much for having me. It's been you a are so welcome. You are so welcome. I just have one question. The wall, the unveiling, is that virtual? It is virtual. Yes. Okay. okay. Just wanted to make sure. Thank you, Pamela. Robert, what do you have for us? My biggest takeaway is that you have stories inside of you that will inspire other people. And it, and it doesn't it doesn't matter what it is or how small you might think it is. You are, you're holding on to something that can really help someone else. And I'll share quickly. I had a guest on my show. She was dealing with systemic lupus. And she got she got a spot on um, a news station. She shared her story and she literally stopped someone from committing suicide oh, because wow. but she couldn't she couldn't deal with the effects of that disease. And so in her mind, she's like, I'm suffering, I'm suffering, I'm suffering. And she was just suffering when she decided to turn it externally. then she was able to find someone who specialized in that disease. She got the right treatment. She switched up her diet. And now all of her, all of her symptoms are in remission. And then she saved that young girl's life. So whatever you're going through, package it up, put it into a story and you can help other people. And if you need help with that, I can help you. You can visit my site, speakaboutyourself.com. It's a Facebook group. And we can help you turn those stories into powerful messages. I love that. That is wonderful. And People, you know, Chandra mentioned early me being authentic. I share a lot of my life. A lot of sometimes people are like, oh, you overshare because anything that's going on in my life, I share, you know, from my eight layoff to my two divorces to, you know, homelessness, whatever I was going through, because I knew that it wasn't for me. It was yes. for someone else to look at that journey and look at my story and say, because of you, I kept going. Because of you, I can become an entrepreneur. I can do all these different things. So whatever pain I went through was, wasn't for me. It was to help someone else. So thank you, Robert, for your passion and for being of service to people with your podcast. Definitely want to get scheduled on your show. Yes, thank yes. you. Ms. Chandra, what did you think of today's show? You kind I of actually <laughs> love the pace of today's show because I learned a lot today. I loved it. It was um it was a great a great boost for my day. I will say that. I mean, and I have been telling people all the time, be authentic, be authentic. Because I've had people want to get on news and get, you know, features and stuff, and their story was fake. And I politely said, you know what, all money's not good money, so I don't, I don't, I don't want to, I will never, I would never perpetrate, you know, a fraud or, you know, pitch a fraud that's wrong to me. So I'm glad that Robert, you're actually assisting those to find their story. Um, that takes a lot of the guesswork out of what people want to do. And that, that's part of what I do as well. So I love the fact that you're actually helping people to step in, like you said, step into your greatness because it <laughs> makes sense that you need to know what your story is. And as a publicist, and a business consultant, sometimes we want to separate the two. You know, my story has nothing to do with my business. Yeah, it does. Because you wouldn't be in business if you didn't have a reason. You didn't have a why. What is your why? What is what is that? What is that? Does that look like? And what do you want your end result to be? So I think today's show was amazing. Um, I think we who, everyone who was here was supposed to be here. And um, there was some serious growth you know given so and some great tips so i'm happy today was great so you all can find me on um social media um at chandra gore consulting my podcast is conversations with chan um i where i have candid conversations with entrepreneurs <laughs> entertainers authors and things of that nature and i also have business tips ever sprinkled in to the podcast and the and on medium.com at conversations with shan so they're great articles there so but i thank you again sharifa because i look forward to my monthly spot i did i took the time and i got my days in because y'all know she put <laughs> y'all know that she's booked. Okay, just want to make sure y'all knew that she was booked. Okay, I just, 
<laughs> I had to get by. I did all mine last year. I wasn't going to, y'all not going to take a chance this year and not get on my show. But yes, but yes, thank you so much for having me today. Thank you, Chandra. Don't say it like that. I'm only booked two months in advance. I'm not booked, you know, for the rest of the year. There's still time. You can get in October, December. There's still room. I get you, you, see, you see what she said? October. December. Like, December. December. Like, like she push it out even further. December. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not all the way booked. I still got months ahead, yeah. you know. Scroll over. See, I, I got a couple of days, you know what I mean? That's still room. <laughs> but people get mad at me. They be like, I went to your website, I tried to schedule and I didn't see anything available. I'm like, what you want me to do? Tell Robert to get up? Like, I don't know what you want from me. I always say if somebody cancels, let me know because I'll be there. I got yeah. lucky because I booked this last night. I saw, I saw. Someone canceled. I was like, tomorrow, yes. 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 <laughs> it's like a, it's like roulette. You got to spin yes. the wheel. You might Listen, win. I made sure to get my days last year. <laughs> yes. So all of you, Pamela, Papa Joe, please feel free to come back. This is what we do weekdays at eight a.m. This is our core group. People join us all the time. This was an amazing, excellent show. I appreciate you all. I want to thank you for being guests on today's episode of the Roundtable Talk Show. And I especially want to thank everyone who tuned in to watch the show live, as well as everyone who is watching it in the archives. I definitely appreciate your support for tuning into the show. I appreciate you sharing the show. But as always, I simply ask you, please don't just watch the show and share the show. Support our guests. Our guests are here this morning to support you, to give you their stories, be their authentic selves. So support them. Their website link is in the Facebook post. But as always, don't just visit the website. Follow them on social media, reach out to them, send them a message. And when you do, please let them know Sharifa Hardy says hi. Now, if you're interested in more ways that I can help your business, or maybe you want to be a guest on the Roundtable Talk Show, please visit my website at AskSharifa.com. Until tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Pacific, everyone have a safe and a blessed day. Bye now.